Welcome to the Mordor BBS podcast. You can visit mordorbbs.com for pop culture news, views and information. Be the first on your blog to simply walk into Mordor. Your hosts for this podcast are Signal and Gameplay Jenny. Angels are coming for you, but listen, your life could depend on this. Don't blink. Don't even blink. Blink and you're dead. They are fast, faster than you could believe. Don't turn your back. Don't look away and don't blink. Oh, pretty scary intro to start with there. Oh, did you actually listen to the intro? Because it wasn't that music at all. No, no, you're right. No, I didn't, to be honest, no. Now, I understand you've been having some issues with Foursquare. Oh, yes, don't talk to me about Foursquare. Dear God, it turns out that one of my Twitter followers uses Foursquare, which I didn't know when I, uh, I I decided to follow him. And now I get tweets every, I would say, 10 seconds telling me exactly where he is and what he's doing, where he's become the mayor of. I can even tell you what restaurant he's eating in tonight, which is in a town that I've just come back from. It's a real shame that I didn't, you know, wait in for him. Could have gone and introduced myself and told him to stop doing it. Yeah, it I, really is the I most irritating thing ever. I don't understand the fascination with services like Foursquare. Why you would want to tweet that you're going to the library or that you're walking down whatever road just because you think that your followers might be interested. It's the sort of thing that I could understand amongst a, perhaps a tightly knit group of friends. But broadcasting your everyday whereabouts to the wider internet, just I just don't understand why it's so popular. This afternoon, this bloke told me he was in Tesco. I don't care. What makes you think that anybody would care? Stop filling up my tweet stream with your general whereabouts. <laughs> you do sound quite annoyed about it. I am quite annoyed about it. Well, sit back, take a deep breath. Relax. <laughs> Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. I love how many free games there are on the internet at the moment. It seems that everywhere you turn, one of the gaming companies, especially for multiplayer games, is releasing a free-to-play game. Even old games, which were previously subscription-based, are now turning into free-to-play with microtransactions. The whole microtransactions concept fills me with fear and dread because I hate to think that if you have more money you, you can get ahead in these games. But it does mean that I get to play an awful lot more games that I otherwise wouldn't. Case in point, I downloaded Age of Conan the other night. And although it was a 12 hour download because of the horrifying speed of the connection, it is a game that I'd always wanted to play and had never been able to because it was you know, yet another subscription fee. Now, you have to really want to play it for it to take 12 hours to download. In all fairness, Jenny, I didn't actually sit there and wait for it to download for 12 hours. I just kicked it off, saw how long it was going to take and went to bed. But yes, it is uh, it is an awfully long download and I think it was more because of the load on the server than anything because so many people were downloading it. Unfortunately, the game itself was a bit of a disappointment, so I am glad that I didn't spend a fortune on it when it first came out. But I do like the whole free-to-play model. And lots of games are doing it, even Warcraft to an extent. You know, the, the big granddaddy of massively multiplayer games has got a sort of semi-free-to-play where you can get up to level 20 without having to actually fork over any dosh. So, yeah, definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, do a search for free-to-play, massively multiplayer online games. I'm sure there's going to be a lot there for you to look at. I had a gentleman on my YouTube channel this week tell me that... It was uh, that he, he sits waiting for me to upload videos. And he said, is, is that wrong? And I said, well, it's only wrong if it's the only thing you're doing. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't the only thing he was doing. That sounds creepy. It, it's like you have an internet if, if stalker. It yeah, if it, if it is, that's, that's well, quite sad, really. I've listened to your channel and it's good, but it's not worth waiting up for. Well, I don't think so either. No, I, I'm. I mean, to be honest with you, you know, I don't spend until four o'clock in the morning uploading stuff. So don't spend until four o'clock in the morning downloading it. 
Tell you what though, having listened to your channel just recently and seeing all those uh, gameplay Jenny Let's Play Oblivion videos that you've been posting, I did crack out my old copy of Oblivion, fire it up, and did actually create myself a character. Now, I have been playing it fairly extensively the last couple of days, and all it's really done is remind me why I uninstalled it in the first place, to be honest. <laughs> So you've uh, you've resurrected Sir Rob of Doomville, then you have? Uh, no, uh, I didn't actually have any of my old characters still around, so I've created a new one. And for the first time ever, I've decided to try out one of the lizards. Oh, no, not the lizards! Well, not the Ar lizards. Argonians, I think they call them. Either way, nobody, it... goes, nobody goes near the lizards. No. Well, well, I'm a lizard. What can I say? It's, a f it's the only game, uh, well actually, it's not the only game that's let me play a lizard, but it's the only game that's let me play a lizard uh, in a very long time that didn't suck completely. Listeners, there are help groups for things like this. So there's some kind of global anti-lizard movement for Oblivion, is there? Ah uh, yeah, I think something along those lines. I have a feeling that when they do The Elder Scrolls 8, wherever the lizards live, it'll probably sell fewer copies. Uh, okay, well... Yeah, it's tr I had a character have to follow me, and it was one of those lizards, and instead of taking the normal road, he actually went out of his way to s swim through the moat of the town. Well, that's probably a, a whole sort of role-playing element. It's a, a little piece of plot point that they put in, which was actually quite excellent, but which you're failing to appreciate. I mean, the lizards are supposed to be pro-water and very, well, lizardy, I guess, uh, and you're just complaining about how much extra programming went into that. On the other hand, it could just be bloody Auroport character direction stuff. Possibly. So, Rob, I think it's time that we talked about Twitter. I don't want to talk about Twitter. Every time we talk about Twitter, you've gained enormous numbers of followers and I've either lost four or I'm simply hanging around waiting for things to happen. So, no, I'm putting my foot down. We're not talking about Twitter in this podcast. I have a replacement bit that I think we should try out. Ow. Yes. You see, I received an email from one of our many, many followers who said that, uh, quoting as best as I can remember, we're not geeky enough to run a pod show about this kind of content. So I thought, well, we'll prove him wrong. And we'll prove how geeky we are. Now what I'm going to do is I've got together a few questions here. Uh, just pop culture, sci-fi type questions. And I'm going to fire them away at you. And you're going to instantly give me correct responses. I'm doomed. The trick is, of course, convincing people that this hasn't been pre-rehearsed, but I can guarantee you, no word of a lie, that Jenny has not yet heard these questions. Isn't that true, Jenny? Oh, I'm doomed. Okay. Question number one. What does the T in James T. Kirk stand for? I'm doomed. I'm going to go for... Ooh. I'm going to go for Theodore. Theodore. Okay. We'll come back to that. Number two. What were the type of killer robots on Blade Runner? What were they called? God, the only thing that I know out of Blade Runner is that Harrison Ford was a replicant and there was a massive Atari advert in it. Okay, well, the answer to the question is actually in what you've just told me. The robots what, were... Atari? <laughs> no, they weren't Atari. <laughs> so Atari 2600s <laughs> with 8-bit graphics. I think they would have stood out in a crowd. Replicants. <laughs> So oh, we'll, right, okay. we'll, call that, we'll call that one a, a Jenny got that one. Do I get ha half a point for that? Uh, I think I'll give you a whole point for that. Yes! Mind you, you get minus 517 for not knowing that James T. Kirk's middle name is Tiberius. Yes! What was the name of the robot on the 1960s movie The Forbidden Planet? Ooh, hmm. I can even see it, and I can't think what it's called. Um Clock's ticking. Um You're going to show us up as non geeks here. Um HAL three thousand. Okay we are not geeks and should perhaps not be running this podcast at all. Um so here's official notification, I'm retiring and I'm going to go and start a podcast about carpets and tweed jackets. But it's me who got the questions wrong. Oh, good point. You're fired.
Thank you for listening to the Mordor B. Okay, after having listened to some of Jenny's legal representation, I've decided that she can work out the remainder of the podcast. So, Jenny, do you have anything else that you would like to bring to our attention? Yes, and this is an important public service announcement. Oh, that sounds ominous. It is, because the next person that I am on a train with who has their music up so loud that not only they can hear it, and not only can I hear it through my own music, but you can hear it at the other end of the carriage, I will be coming over to you to do something incredibly unpleasant. I hope that is clear. You mean like starting a conversation with them? Yes! Ooh, you see, I used to hate it when I was sitting on a train or a bus listening to my music and some grumpy old biddy would come walking up and tell me to turn it down. I am that grumpy old biddy. (laughs) To be honest, I think you've got a fair point there. There is nothing worse than having to suffer through a long trip, usually in unpleasant climatic conditions, just to have some oik playing super loud music. And it it just gets to you because you... It's not loud enough for you to sort of hum along. And it's always crap. Why do people always play music I never want to hear at loud volumes? One day, when I hear somebody playing, or whatever it happens to be, I'm going to go over to them, I'm going to take my earphones off, and I'm going to make my mobile phone play Ratman in a second piano concerto in their ear. That would make you an incredibly popular person. And ironically, because this is how these things work, You'd be the one who gets thrown off the train. It would be worth it. Is anyone else missing the 60s and 70s British cop shows as much as I am? I'm sure there are listeners out there who remember the professionals and the Sweeney and Z cars. I find the modern crop of largely US-influenced high-tech police shows just don't cut the mustard. Gone are the days of the Rosses chasing a blackguard down the road in a panda car. Now it's all 3D touchscreen and solving a crime because the offender was covered with a very specific type of pollen. I miss the plight of the English Bobby, even when that Bobby was called Bodie and worked for MI5, because back then they knew how to make a good cop show, not just a popular one. You solved crime by knocking on doors and talking to people, not by plugging yesterday's pollen count into your supercomputer and waiting for it to give you the offender's postcode. Nobody wants a plod who's dressed like a used car salesman who's good at IT. Plod should wear a leather jacket and call the boss governor and not spend the tiniest jot of time worrying about their hairdo. Speaking of the professionals, those of you who've been following us for a little while will hopefully have noticed that we replaced our ghastly intro voice with a top-notch quality intro voice. Yes, we've employed a professional. No, not that kind of professional. The professional voiceover artist kind of professional. He's almost certainly never shot at an escaping villain from the driver's seat of a baby sick coloured Ford Capri 3.0S, but if someone did, he could tell you about it beautifully. I didn't even know you could hire someone to do voiceover work for you from the instant until very recently, and when I did, I was very surprised to find out just how inexpensive it all was. I could probably harp on about this for some time, but it's probably best that you hear it from the chap himself. So we asked him to join us on the show tonight. Hello, my name's Peter Baker. I'm a voiceover and presenter and a kind of video producer as well. I've been in the media all my life, started in radio, moved over to TV and uh, now doing some production work. But mostly it's voiceovers. And uh, you may know me as a top rated seller on the Fiverr site, which I've been doing about a year now. A lot of people said, why get into that? But it's kind of interesting. After years of voicing carpet commercials and things, which you get paid very well for, you get much more variety with Fiverr, and you meet some very interesting people, like the people behind the site that you're on now. I started with Fiverr because I wanted to drum up new clients for voiceovers, and it has worked amazingly well. Uh, People know me from either Fiverr or direct through my website, which is MailVO. A lot of people don't understand why I put that, but on scripts, you see, you say Mail Voiceover. So you write on a script, M-A-L-E, Mail, V-O. And so I'm MailVO.co.uk. Hey, get it? A lot of people think, what the hell does that mean? But anyway, that's what it is. So you get an enormous variety, and my voice is on all sorts of different things. I'm on uh, real estate sites in Australia. I'm on a boat trip in China down the Yangtze River. Uh, Train stations in the UK. Bizarre things to read phone messages, and all sorts of crazy nonsense. So it's good fun, I must say. And if you ever wanted to get into the voiceover business, it is quite fun. And I have a website for people 
because I'm not sick of people asking me, but I've put it all in one place. It's a site called presenterskills.co.uk and various tips of how to improve your voice. And I'll give you one quick one now. And this is good for you if you're about to give a speech at work, uh, on a stage, uh, wherever, in a meeting, and you don't like your voice and you think you're going to mumble, the best thing to do is Q-E-Q-R. So if you do Q, in other words, ooh, like that, and then E, so you stretch your mouth, E, then Q again, so your mouth is a tiny ooh, and then R, which opens it up wide, wah. So you go Q, E, Q, R, Q, E, Q, R. If you do that about 20 times, I assure you, you will give your mouth muscles a much needed workout and you will find yourself pronouncing your words easier. And uh, suddenly people can understand you clearer. There we are. Handy voiceover tip of the day. Anyway, from me, Pete Baker, signing off. I'll let you get back to the normal stuff. And uh, check out my main website, which is www.mailvo.co.uk. Thank you. OK, Jenny, I guess the time has come for you now to now clear out your locker. It's been great working with you. It's going to be sad to see you go, but th- these things happen. It's all right, though, Rob, because I know how to make everything OK. Okay, how can we make everything okay? All you need to do is to search for make-everything-okay.com I can see a button. Let's Press the button. Oh, okay. Everything's okay now. Told you. Excellent. Well, moving right along, uh, I found a rather interesting thing on the internet. What do you think of whale noises? To be really honest with you, I don't normally think of whale noises. I think you can get tablets for things like that. <laughs> well, you, you've probably seen the footage of submarine acoustic experts listening with their headsets as their submarine glides silently through the ocean. The sounds of ships, other subs, and biologicals, otherwise known as fish, whales, and dolphins, and so forth. Um, there's a website which actually lets you listen to all that stuff live. What it comprises is a, a collection or a network of underwater microphones that are set to listen to its frequencies that whales and dolphins operate at. And you launch into the site, which is listen to the deep.net. It gives you a list of microphones to click on around the world, and you can listen to the ships chugging past, the whales hooting away or uh, the dolphins making their funny clicks and clacks. It's all very exciting and very eco, so if you're in that frame of mind, it's possibly a good way to relax of an evening. Okay then, Rob, why don't we tune into one of those microphones now? I suppose we could do that. Oh my god! Flipper! Look out for the ship! Oh! Sushi! Thank you for listening to the Mordor BBS podcast. Don't forget that you can visit us online at mordorbbs.com.